done. Okay, I'm now going to be attempt to make the, this elevator. So essentially what I do is I just take the, the, the tail end, trailing edge of the, the tail end anyway, and I'm going to make a line across here, which I do, and a line up on both sides, which I basically have done there. Now I design my, how big do I, I want the rudder to, or the elevator to be. Uh, do I want to be oversized? You know, what kind of, again, this is a, all for 3D flyers and, and authority in your elevator and rudder are so important. I just took my ruler, or my straight edge in this case, and said, okay, well, I'm going to make it that thick in each side, so I do, you know, straight line all the way down, okay? And then I measured for size. See what kind of what kind of length I want to get, and I want to start off with uh, the front being zero to five inches this way. And I found my center of the rudder, measuring from here to here. I make a center line, and I just draw the center line. The reason for the triangle is because that's where the actual rudder is going to move this way. Okay, so this area here has to be cut out. Uh, the only way I can get them the same is to draw one side and then flip it over and trace it and draw that side. So I'm putting a new kitchen floor and I don't have to worry about this. So I'm going to cut that right there. Remember a little bit ahead from your from your start points so you get a nice flat cut. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Again, line it up on the line before the cut, sort of push forward and then gently pull back and you know, you do your second score and she's through. And now she's cut that. And this one should be cut. A square is a good, very good tool to have. Because, uh, well, it's good to have things square, as square as they can be. Alright. Now, this is where follow this line here, cut this out, this is my center, so I'm going to cut my center line, okay, now basically I just put this over across here, make sure it's all lined up and trace it out, have some impact on the plane and that's that's obvious, right? But here we've got an elevator. It may not be exactly, you know, right to the millimeter, but whatever. And it's going to fit in here. Now we cut it a little bit large, because at, at the very beginning, uh, for a particular reason. And I'm going to show you that after I do this. Now I can see that I've got a whole lot of area here, okay, that I'm not going to, I'm not going to need all that bulk in that area. So I'm going to cut some of that out. Here, I'm just going to make a cut. As long as I've got that, that center mark, I know where, where my center is, and that's an important thing. Okay, then I'll flip that over to this side. It's so crafty. And surprising enough, you don't have to put any um, carbon fiber across here. The hinge is basically just going to be glued onto there, and that's more than sufficient. Let's cut out the back side of that 45 degree angle that we're talking about. Again, about a quarter or half an inch or so. All right, here we go. And let's see if we can get all the way through. Right to there. Looks like I might have went a little bit off center there. We're very, very tight. So I'm gonna just take just a hair line off of this side. And a hairline off of this side. Okay, so that's going this way. Now we're going to push this all the way up tight. And we're 
we're going to use our straight edge and follow the contour of the beveled stab like so okay and the same goes on this side here Straight, the best it can be, and the next time it held down in place, and voila. Okay, so now we've got our elevator. Just two little small, small pieces to start. Just one at the edge. At this edge, because we're going to use the reinforced tape for our real seal. And I'm gonna just make sure this is not binding anywhere and set it at the 45 degree angle. Taper down. And look how free, look how beautiful that is. Okay, so now you see a nice floating elevator all ready to rock, and it's nicely beveled. You play on the, or any work on the servo. I don't want the servo to have to work harder than, than they already do, so. Now we'll just sort of assemble it and see how it looks. So we're gonna slide that in. I notice we talked about, I don't know if we can digitally enhance that. That's the reason why that part is cut out like that. Okay, so you're able to, when you have it set, in the right position, you're able to get full deflection right there. Okay. Have the orientation right. Give yourself a little bit of clearance at the top so you're not going to bind. And make sure that's on the 45 de degree side. Like so. And down at the bottom, like so. so we got Look at those free surfaces, okay? That's how free, freely they move. Okay. And sort of slide it into position. Then we're gonna take our other aileron. It's starting to look like an airplane. Now I've got uh, the wings just, are just tempered on, just a little bit of scotch tape. And this is where I was telling you about, you know, if, if they're if you make them a little bit too big, it's okay because this is the next step that you're going to have to take. So when you look here, you can obviously see that the aileron does not want to go past that part of the fuse. Okay, so we have to cut it, but we're not going to cut it from the underside. We have to cut it from the top side. And the reason we have to cut it from the top side is because that way we can see where our fuse is. Okay, and we can run it in line towards that. Something like that, it's really good because you can mount the plane on a table and then take your straight edge and say, okay, that's where it's going to go. Okay, so that's the area that I'm going to cut off. Now I can make this, you know, as close as I want. It's good to have a little bit of room, you know, just the wings are, remember, the wings are not a solid, a solid thing, right? So if there's a little bit of a little bit of room in between, it's okay, but we're not putting too much. Alrighty, so just like so, and once we find our spot, let's see where we're going to just go ahead and cut. That piece just disappeared. Look at that. Went under the table. We're just taking off such a hairline. Okay, make sure everything is nice and tight. Out of time for that knife to slip off that straight edge. Okay. Now you can see we've got a really nice, look how free those ailerons, the ailerons here are just hanging, just beautiful. Okay, all the surfaces are just like that. This we can use CA for this, 
Uh, you don't have to use foam safe CA. And what we're going to do, okay, we're just going to kind of give a slight little push, separating the, the fuse from the wing. And just, just, you know, watch some of the glue just sort of go in there. Not a ton of it. Okay. And hold her on there. pushing it down giving a little bit extra reinforcement. You don't want to use a ton of glue because the glue doesn't have to go all the way up and down both sides of the fuse and double up everywhere because remember when you have an ounce of glue that's an ounce. You know that adds to the weight of the plane so whatever you can get away with just so ever so slightly. And I'll just take a shot of exciter. So so I'll do that same on this side. I'll do a little bit of blue uh, under both sides here. I'll leave a little area though for a servo because the servo is going to get mounted here. And I don't want to have to fight with any glue. So I'll mark out a little area for a servo and then just glue there. And, and I'll just basically just, you know, put some glue over some of the areas where it has to be, you know. And then we'll do a little bit on the front end. Finish the taping and we're basically done from there. So let's do that. I was talking about taping, okay, so what, I, what I've done is, is I've just put uh, some reinforced, this is this, it's like a nylon tape with a uh, reinforced string, and I've done the same thing on the 45, okay, I've, now when you do the in, inner part, okay, the inner part is a little bit tricky because you want to make sure that the tape goes from the surface onto the 45, onto the straight part of the fuse and then tape it around the edge. This way you get a complete a complete bind. The way that is all, see how the tape goes around there, goes at the 45 and comes to the flat part of the fuse and then around, goes on the end. Okay. Now making sure it goes into that 45 degree bevel that I cut and now I'm feeling a flat surface which is the fuse, and then coming around the outside here. So that makes it very, very free, okay? It's really easy to, uh, to maneuver that surface, okay? And the same will go with the bottom of the elevator. I'm gonna do the, I'll do the aileron the same way. And then, because it's so much tape, I'm just gonna do it in little, little pieces, okay? One at the end, say one in the middle, and one closest, close, closest to the inside of the fuse there. As far as the nose, all as I did was just basically just follow the what I had drawn in before. You cut out a square. Now I'm going to make some doublers uh, in a moment, just to reinforce the bottom. And it's real simple to do. I'll show you how to do that because I'm building this for a friend of mine, and uh, so see how that's going to work. So. Let's get the doublers going. Doublers are simple, okay? What they do is they just double up the strength, okay? So I got the plane upside down and I just make some square, just some square cuts. And, you know, I've gone at one time where I used to make them all the way to the leading edge of the, of the wing, you know what I mean? Pieces in the back, all over the place, you know, two on each side. And you don't really need that, okay? Because they're, uh, the lighter they are, the better they are, the better they are. If, they, if, if they're lighter and they crash, the less damage. Okay, so that's something to think about. So I got the plane upside down and I've got these doublers. And these doublers I've got in length are roughly about three and a half inches. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to be able to match them, um, butt it up the side, okay? Make it nice and tight inside here and then tight here and then just cut uh, later out. Uh, with a knife to make it a, a nice finish. So what I do is I say, okay, the doubler's going to be here. So I'm just going to make a little, little mark right there and a little mark right there. So I know this whole area inside here needs a little bit of glue, okay? I'm going to stay within these lines here, okay? Just make a small little, little bead here. And again, this is done on the bottom half of the plane. Because the, the lighter it is, 
better it is and cosmetically on the bottom is nicer because you don't see these lines on the top. You see that that blue there, but that's okay. It's all about scratching. These planes are, are designed to fly, get them up in the air as fast as possible. You know, it, it's, it's not meant to be the most beautiful plane ever designed, you know. But uh, I'm starting to think, man, it's got to be close up that alley because these planes fly nice. Man, do they fly. This one is done. And we're basically going to do the same just to this half. Okay, this half and this half, and then we're going to keep the, the top free. But let's go on now with our knife and see if we can sort of cut that out. And a sharp knife is, is better. Okay. What I normally do is I just sort of give it a, a score okay. and a cut. Okay, just like that. Score it and then just give it a little pull. Same on this side here. And just take it off in little trim areas. Just like that. If you have like a really sharp knife, then you can sort of you know, trace it out. These knives are not too bad though. These little old guys. When that's complete, what you see is we've got three layers at the bottom. We got one extra layer in the bottom of the horizontal stab, and we've got that looking like this. Now we're just all we have to do is just take a measurement of this square, okay? How wide that is, and we're going to take a uh, one eighth, three thirty second piece of of um, plywood, piece of plywood, and glue that straight in here. That's a good idea to have the motor mounted to the actual motor mount and when you glue it in so you can check, uh, hold it up and make sure that it's got, uh, it's, uh, uh, that the motor is relatively uh, straight in there. Your thrust line is pretty straight going right down the middle of the, the fuse plus a little bit of right thrust, maybe about 10 degrees so when you look at the motor from the front like so, when you look at it like this you can see the motor slightly a little bit to the right, giving a little bit of right thrust. Is some of the wear spots. I, uh, I actually take tape, like uh, scotch tape, and just go a little bit around the front of the leading edge, side of the wing, uh, this corner, maybe a couple inches in. And later on, I'll do that on both sides and uh, across the top of the fuse. Okay. Any areas basically where your hands are going to be touching because what happens this paper is very subject to moisture okay so if you're you know you're out and it's you know a very humid day or you're hot you're sweating and you're, you're, you're touching the paper it'll actually start to come away from the foam and it, it becomes an issue so I try to just to, to do those extra little little touches it doesn't weigh very much and it helps uh, with the longevity of the plane plus the firewall once it's glued in I take just scotch tape and and just go around and because this is going to always be, when you land it, this is going to be, you know, hitting the grass and then that starts to, uh, you know, it gets green and discolored and whatever, it sort of gets ugly. This way you just can you know, wipe it away and same on the bottom. And finally on the tail, on this little dragger, I'll wrap that up pretty good uh, using some of the, the tape that we use on the, the nylon tape that we use on the surfaces. Just because it uh, it's constantly, you know, sitting on there, you have to set it off the ground. It's always sitting on here. so. Except when it's in the air, so. And when it's actually finished, just take a quick little boo on how that's, you can see how that's mounted in there, right? Just a piece of hardwood is just going inside there. And then I just use a scotch tape and just go over the edges, right? All the way under this side, okay? And down here as well. And on the top, just like I said. That all makes a big difference as to to the wear of the thing, so they're great looking airplanes. Uh, these scratches, like I say, if you can build a scratch, look like one of the coolest flying airplanes, I think. Good luck in your build. I am your radical do boy. 
signing out.